If you take a look at Warren Buffett's 63 stock portfolio with Berkshire Hathaway, you might notice that Tesla isn't part of it. The famed value investor passed on investing in the EV company back in 2008 because he had doubts that Tesla could win in direct competition with legacy automakers. He instead put his money behind rivals BYD and General Motors. There's no question that investing in Tesla would have delivered Buffett huge returns. A $200 million investment made in Tesla in late 2008 would be worth about $620 billion today. So why did Warren Buffett pass on Tesla? And what factors does he key on when evaluating companies? On this IBD Explained, we ask, what does Warren Buffett look for in winning stocks? And joining me is IBD's personal finance and management editor, Matt Krantz. So Matt, why did Warren Buffett pass on Tesla and what might that move suggest about his view of risk? We'll probably never really know. He hasn't really said, he hasn't told us, but we've guessed. And it's really, if you think about what Warren Buffett's looking for, he wants predictability. And if you were to pick a company that's not predictable, Tesla would be pretty high on the list. Doesn't even have a CEO as a techno king, Elon Musk. The results are volatile. The stock went down like about 50% last year. That's not the kind of thing he wants to mess around with. I mean, he'll he'll play with some risky things, but it really was in play with his normal style of passing on Tesla when he did. So you mentioned predictability, but what other attributes uh, would make up a Warren Buffett stock? I think, you know, I've thought about that a lot and people try to figure it out. And one thing he loves is a moat. So he likes businesses that are protected from marauders competition so think of a castle surrounded by a moat it's really hard to, to compete with them he loves that so apple is kind of a good example of that it's hard to compete with the iphone but he also does to go back to that theme he loves predictability he doesn't mind if a business goes south as long as he knew it was kind of going south and he kind of predicted it and he kind of knew what to do to get out of it so he's not afraid of volatility necessarily but he wants to know what he's in for. And there are certain industries that he likes the best because of that. Buffett's name is synonymous with value investing, and he is known to buy and hold stocks for long periods of time. Um, can you talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this approach? Yeah. So if you know what you're, if you know a business really well, for example, how stable it is. Seize candy is a great example. We don't really know how it does, but we know it's stable. And people buy the same Easter candy every year. They buy the same Christmas candy every year. So you know what you're in for. He loves that kind of a business and he loves it even better if he can get it cheap. And he'll hold that forever. And he's he's held Coke, for example, forever, partially because he can't sell it because if he were to sell it, he'd have an enormous capital gain. But the con is he sometimes gets in his in over his head and he has to kind of reverse course. One of the biggest changes that we've noticed with Buffett lately is he is willing to dump stuff. He dumped Verizon. That's one of the best examples. The, the uh, mobile carriers is not keeping up with T-Mobile, which he owns. And I think sometimes you have to reverse course. As, as a result, another con is he sometimes he freaks out sometimes. Like he panic sold all the airlines during the pandemic, which was in hindsight a bad move. But that's kind of the catch of wanting to buy stocks and trying to hold on to them for a long time. So how does Buffett's approach to evaluating potential stock winners blend with some of the key growth components that IBD likes to use? That's a great question. I think a lot of times people do think that the Buffett approach is totally different than the IBD approach. And I don't really see it that way. While Buffett does like to buy things cheap and he's reluctant, but not unwilling to sell them, IBDers like to move into stocks a little bit faster. But one thing that we share in common with Warren Buffett is homework. We both spend a lot of time studying the fundamentals. We don't just follow the stock prices. Um, we, we make sure that there's growth there. And even Warren Buffett, I mean, he likes companies that are not shrinking. I mean, he, he'll, he'll be willing to buy a shrinking company if he gets it cheap, but he wants a company that's got a life to it. Because as we said before, he does want to keep them for a little bit of time. And you talked about you know that reluctance to sell and maybe there's been some change in his behavior recently, but Looking at that, what does it take for him to sell? Because, you know, he famously said that his favorite holding period for an S&P 500 stock is forever. What are some of the considerations that maybe he would take into mind to actually dump a stock? Yeah, that's a great question, too. Um, I, I've thought about that as well. And it seems like it really comes down. He places a lot of faith in management. And we do that, too, at IBD. He really does. Like when he buys a company, he kind of he's buying the manager. And he would prefer to almost leave that company be and let it run. 
And when he has, when he loses faith in the management, I think that's when he kind of loses faith in the stock. And that's what we saw with Wells Fargo, which was a long-term holding of his. And he very, very reluctantly sold that just slowly, slowly, slowly. You could tell he didn't want to give it up, but he lost all faith in the management for good reason. They have not proven that they can get out of the scandals with all the accounts that they were setting up. There's new management there, but they just can't get it going. And I think that's his number one reason to sell. And just to wrap everything up, what are some key lessons growth investors can take from Buffett's approach to looking at winners or selling stocks? And how could they implement those lessons in their investing routines? And again, that's another great question and something that we have in common with him. And he's been showing this more uh, recently, the willingness to just admit that you were wrong. If you buy a stock, so he bought the airline. This is the second time he's lost money on airlines. He bought them the second time. He finally just had to capitulate and it's hard, but you know, you do all your homework and you think you have a winner, but if it's not working out, if it's not doing what you need to do, you got to know, you got to get out. And even Warren Buffett does it too. Well, Matt, thank you so much for your insights today. Thanks for having me.